Hey coaches, welcome back for episode three in our middle school air raid webinar series. Once again, my name is Matt Lasker. Appreciate you joining me. I'm gonna take you through this episode as well. Today we are moved on to the to get into the fun parts here, uh, the air raid play menu. And we're gonna go through it and kind of pick our poison and hopefully you can pick your poison uh, after this and, and see what you wanna go to what you wanna go to battle uh, with. Uh, in your air raid playbook uh, real quick if you haven't take a two seconds look below hit that subscribe button want to make sure you get this new release every time it comes out right when it comes out so hit that subscribe button if you appreciate these videos please it helps me out a lot if you just hit that like button right now and then obviously as i'm talking comment uh, as you see fit uh, and then again whistle.com without the i whistle.com is the pulse of our online coaching community so go ahead go there we're going to use that to supplement everything we're teaching here mm -hmm. we already have groups set up for middle school air raid where you can talk about what you've seen here we have groups in there to talk about mesh there's 18 types of meshes posted there from viewers like you 17 types of y corner and the y corner group posted from you guys so again otherwise we'll see you over at whistle.com all right so here we are you are picking your, plays, picking your poison today, and let's get into it. All right, so you should be able to see on your screen. Let me enlarge that a bit. You should be able to see on your screen uh, an air raid play menu. Um, and we have the naming conventions, which we typically use uh, at the middle school and youth level. We just call it hitches or stick or shallow or mesh. Uh, but you see to the right, um, of some of these, you have some numbers. So if you are a traditionalist, uh, traditional air raid systems and coaches, they use the numbering system. And this is technically the numbering system. So if you see that, feel free to talk about it uh, in that way. Uh, I've been finally come accustomed to it this year, about this time last year. I was having a hard time, but I've seen it enough times now I kind of got it down. Um, so I just want to educate you guys if you want to learn the numbering system. There it is as well. Okay. So number one, the first thing I want to just kind of level set, I mentioned it last video, but if you didn't see last video, um, we one of our core values running air raid is a small playbook. Again, we want to pick a small amount of plays and just out execute everyone. If we play a team and they have two or three days to prepare for us, there's no way if we've been running our core plays since spring that they can they can uh, prepare in a, in a week for what we've been doing for months, okay? So my, I myself have a hard rule about 12 plays being the max. And I mean it, guys, 12 plays max. I went to war with 11, and I finally got comfortable with a, one of these, uh, an additional drop back game pass to where I'm gonna, I'm gonna run 12 plays, but this will be the first time, guys. And if you go to 12 and you see something online where you love something, that you saw on Twitter or one of our Facebook groups or on whistle.com, someone posted something cool. Um, if you want to add that, that's great, but that means you got to take something out. Guys, don't go over 12. I'm telling you, it all kind of works together. I'm going to show you here in a second our install schedule. It literally is set up for 12 plays, especially at the youth and middle school level. Guys, it's not about what you know, it's about what you can teach and what you can get into a practice plan. So Try to stay with me here. Challenge yourself to stay with 12 plays, um, and we'll go through this. Secondly, before we start picking, I don't have time to go into every single what one of these plays and what they do and, and what they attack and why they're great. Any, every play on here is awesome. There is a ton of content all over the Internet on every single one of these plays, so please take your time. I'll try to describe them quickly here. But please take your own time to go research because by the end of this, you can hopefully pick your 12 plays uh, in this format. OK, so first things first, if you're new to passing the ball, uh, quick game, you'll see at the top, quick game, drop back game, screen game, run game. That's kind of how we uh, categorize our, our types of plays. Let's just start with quick game. And it's just what it sounds like. It's literally quick passes. Uh, if you're under center, it's a traditional quick three step drop. If, it's, if you're in the shotgun, like most of us are for air raid, it's just a one-step drop and you're getting the ball out, okay? 
Um, the, the linemen know it's quick game. The receivers know it's quick game. But again, the ball is coming out. So hitches, just what it sounds like. All if you're in our open set two by two, everyone's running hitches, right? And you know, in in theory, uh, especially at the youth level, there's a lot of cover three out there. And if those if those cornerbacks are sinking, uh, and you can just take easy five yard uh, gains uh, on the outside with our outside receivers just running three step hitches or three step sticks, however you want to say it. Uh, you got a one-on-one -on -one match, and in youth football, as you guys know, that's usually where we hide uh, our not-so-great players, um, unless you're just blessed with talent everywhere. That's usually where we hide those guys. So you got your best receiver out there on a three-step stick, catching the ball, turning around, and seeing this DB who's probably not as good an athlete with them. Guys, that's a pretty deadly play. Uh, stick is being run from youth all the way through the pros. Uh, they Everyone runs stick, um, stick concept, and that's in most air raid playbooks in some way, shape, or form. A lot of people pair that with corner. We're going to do the same, and I'll show you guys in the next in the next video how those two kind of work together. But stick and corner kind of work in a similar way. They attack the exact same pieces of grass. They're just switching responsibilities. Um, so those are two staples. I think wide corner and all verts, we threw about 15 touchdowns with wide corner and 15 separately with verts. So wide corner is one of my favorite plays or concepts. Uh, fade out. Um, you're going to find out here in a second that I'm going to take fade out and use it. I've never used it till this last year. And now I can't believe I just did a video on it on the YouTube channel. I can't believe I ever live without it. Uh, it's such a great play. Uh, slant flats. Pretty much everyone has this. I've never used it in our playbook. Uh, Coach Joe Salas, if you ever want to see a video, uh, does, did a video on uh, on slant flats, which is amazing, breaks down the reads. Uh, it might be a little bit complex for my quarterbacks, but uh, it's in every playbook and it works in seven on seven. <laughs> Great. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. Uh, some people don't think of four verticals as a quick game. Uh, if you, on the next on the next episode. I'm going to show you how we use it, and it is absolutely a quick game at the youth and middle school level. When I did some high school coaching, uh, it was less of a quick game play, but definitely for youth and middle school, you can use it as a quick game uh, and, and, and do just that, okay? Uh, drop back game. So as opposed to quick game, which is a one-step drop from shotgun or a three-step drop from under center, drop back game takes a lot longer these are long crossing routes so the so the footsteps is under center it's a five step drop and if you're in the shotgun it's a three step drop so it's a true deeper drop for the quarterback these are again receivers have to go across the field to get where they're going so it takes a little bit longer for that to develop uh sorry so shallow uh why shallow h shallow is a huge play for us uh mesh obviously is uh worldwide and at every level everyone's running some version of mesh and please believe it guys even if these aren't air raid teams every nfl team runs mesh uh, sale is a really great concept um, especially for the high school level why cross cross is the is the play i alluded to i hadn't run it before but i'm adding that to mine smash is always a, a crazy good concept if you have the line to hold up for it and some people do put four verts in that drop game category, drop back game category. So I put it there so you guys can kind of see um, what's going on with that. Okay. Now, screen game, there's only three that I can really think of. There's the quick games. So it's like total bubble screens, now screens on the outside. You really don't have the line involved with those quick screens. It's really just about numbers on the outside. If you have numbers, go out there and throw it and let your athletes play. Uh, tunnel screens, that's when we get the linemen involved. Um, so we'll go through that and then the slow traditional running back screen, um, is the other one. Okay. So we'll take all three of those. Uh, and then the run game is where you guys, if you've been part of the running, uh, you know, traditional running system, you might have a lot of options there. Um, really, if you look down at the bottom, I've kind of highlighted, we just need three really great run plays. It's the same concept as the offensive passing plays. You might think you need more than three run plays, but you really don't. Think about how many you actually call in a game. You're probably only calling about three 
anyway in a game, uh, the ones that you can count on. So just get those three uh, and, and work them to death so these linemen know exactly what to do. And so really, in a perfect world, you'd have one inside run, one outside run, and an off-tackle run. Now, I see all five-man fronts, so the inside run is really tough for me to dedicate uh, practice time to it. So typically what I do um, is go two off tackles and then an outside run because I love power, I love counter, and those are off tackle plays for us. Uh, and then we could always throw in some some jet sweeps. So let me go through. I will pick out my plays right now. So for for um, for my quick game, we are going four verts, corner, and corner. Like I mentioned, kind of. In incorporates stick into it uh and then like i said fade out i'm going to work the heck out of fade out this year okay so those are my four those are my three those are my three quick games and i'll cheat a little bit on this and put stick in there as well but uh just know um we can teach that so quickly now uh together because again it's the same concept just kind of people reversing their duties that it can be done on the same day. Um, so for me, my my number one drop back game is shallow. If I hadn't really had to go to war, and some of you guys, if you're at the youth level, fifth grade, I probably wouldn't even have a drop back game. And if it is, it's shallow. Um, I'm going to go mesh. And I'm going to go, as I mentioned earlier, cross. Okay, that's just a deadly play. All right, I'm going to take all three of these. Put them in here, and guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you how to run all these plays, so don't sweat it. Uh, and then I mentioned to you earlier, counter is my baby. We are very much, uh, very much like uh, Oklahoma in that we run GT counter uh, nonstop, power, and you know, really, you know, a fly sweep. We we treat. I should have said this with the screen game. We really treat these quick screens as our sweeps. We don't truly have uh, like a toss sweep in our offense. These quick screen bubble screens out to the slot receivers. I, I mentioned the H in our in our in our in our, uh, in our uh, offense is essentially a, a second running back. So we really treat those as our sweeps. Um, we do have fly sweep with the with the slot receivers and and sometimes the R. Um, I really wanted to do draw. We have draw, but again with five down linemen, it's really hard to to be okay running draw. Okay, so here's my here's what my playbook looks like this year, um, and I'm excited. We've got 12 solid plays, and we are going to rep the heck out of it. But I mentioned last video, nothing matters, guys. If you don't but go all in and practice this shit right and set up your schedule to to optimize and make sure you're efficiently teaching this stuff, it won't matter. Okay, so here's how it works. So our three-day install, I'm going to release this install plan to you guys, whistle.com. It's on the file sharing tab. Um, we will take those 12 plays and plug them in. So week one, every Monday. We are going to focus on one run game. So you saw I picked counter as my first one. One quick game, four verticals. Okay, so we took four verticals. We took counter. We took four verticals. We just plug them in here. That's our one quick game for the day. Our one drop back game for the day is shallow. And our one screen for the day is our bubble screens. And we call that Larry and Roger. And I'll teach you guys how to do that. And the only formation for the whole first week is going to be two by two. Okay, our ace, and I should put open in there as well. So our two op ace and open sets, okay? And so the next Monday, we are going to go back and continue on with just running counter that day and just running verts that day and just running shallow that day and just running bubble screens that day. But we're going to layer in our three by one set. And so as you can see, we repeat this every Monday. It's the same core plays every Wednesday for us. It's uh, it's it's every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We do offense in camp. Um, on Wednesdays, we'll do our next three 
So we'll go power. Um, that should be fade out because this year I'm changing it and mesh and then tunnel screens. And we'll only focus on that. All of our, all of our, uh, all of our individual periods, all of our, uh, all of our indie periods with our, with our, uh, with our uh, position groups, receiver routes that day, everything relates to the plays that we are repping that day. And so uh, every Monday we'll do the same core plays and we'll just build on each other and add more formations. And every Wednesday we'll do the same core plays and it'll build on each other and add formations for three weeks. And every Friday we're going to do the same core plays um, every Friday and it'll, it'll add on and build on each other and we'll layer in formations. But by the end of that three week install guys, and some of us are lucky. I think I get another, another week this year for some reason. And that's going to be dangerous to have a whole nother week to play with this. But that's how you systematically set up your install schedule. And I'll get into practice plans in a video here in a second. Uh, but this is how we take our play menu, choose our 12 plays, plug them into an install plan. And now we're ready to go for camp. And all we need to worry about next is our practice script. Okay. All right, guys. Hopefully that made sense and you and 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 it was helpful. If it was helpful at all, please, please, please like like this video below. Obviously, you need to subscribe to get the next video that's coming out, which is our three quick game plays. This is the most popular. This was the most popular video uh, when I released this uh, this webinar series a year ago. Uh, the, the first time, this was the most popular one. So make sure you tune in for the next one. You need to subscribe so you can make sure you get on that one. Uh, and between now and then, go to whistle.com. Please, please, please. Whistle.com is the pulse of our online coaching community. Go on there. Collaborate about these plays. Collaborate about this, this webinar series. I'm on there monitoring, so you can talk to me directly uh, there as well. Uh, but until next time, guys, let's continue, continue, continue to spread the word to other coaches that they can play spread football. These kids want to play spread football, and more importantly, they deserve to. So let's make sure we give them a chance and bring these participation numbers back up where they belong. All right? All right, guys. We'll see you in a little bit. See you on the next one.